Right now at 11, the holy grail of clean energy. And it was brought to life by a group of Bay Area scientists. Ahead, what it could mean to redefine what is possible with the national security and clean energy. I want to say a good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us for our midday newscast. I'm Marcus Washington. And I'm Laura Garcia. A reminder, you can also watch us live on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and online. Now, this is so interesting. That scientific breakthrough happened just a week ago at a laboratory right in our own backyard. NBC Bay Area's Ginger Kana Harrell Sob. She's live for us in Livermore with more on that exciting national announcement. Ginger? That's right, Marcus and Laura, very exciting. It's a huge milestone, not just for those who live and study within the realms of nuclear fusion, but it is poised to also have real world implications for all of us, normal folks. It happened last Monday here at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory within its National Ignition Facility. Now what they achieved, it's called fusion ignition, and it's referred to as the holy grail of clean energy. Scientists have been chasing it for decades. Governments have spent billions in working to achieve it and within the walls of NIF here in Livermore it happened. Earlier this morning a national press conference was held in Washington DC making this milestone official. But what exactly happened in that experiment? Well last Monday December 5th scientists pointed 192 lasers at a target as big as a peppercorn inside a small cylinder. You can see that cylinder on your screens now that cylinder heated up to over 3 million degrees Celsius, two megajoules of energy inputted into it. Three megajoules were measured as output, netting a gain of over one, which has never been done before. And it opens up new potential for the world of inertial energy. This is a historic achievement for the team at Livermore, our collaborators in academia and labs in the U.S. and abroad, our industry partners, the fusion community writ large, and the many supporters and stakeholders in the National Nuclear Security Administration, the Department of Energy, and in Congress, who've ensured we could reach this moment, even when the going was tough. Over the past 60 years, thousands of people have contributed to this endeavor, and it took real vision to get us here. Such a huge milestone now producing fusion energy that will one day power homes and businesses. Well, that is still quite a ways away, maybe decades away. But scientists do say that today's announcement of making it official is a significant step in that direction. We're live in Livermore, Ginger Conero Saab, NBC Bay Area News. That's significant indeed. Thank you so much, Ginger. Well, scientists of a certain age know this is not the first time fusion has been the subject of a blockbuster announcement. Yeah, Scott McGrew takes us back 33 years. Yeah, you can't say big fusion announcement without thinking of cold fusion. That became one of the biggest embarrassments in science, the Milli Vanilli of physics. Now, fusion happens all the time in the sun, in nuclear bombs, even in reactors like this one called a tokamak. But cold fusion, the ability to bring two atoms together at room temperature, now that would be extraordinary. And even the scientists at Lawrence Livermore today aren't claiming that. But back in the 90s, two scientists thought they had created cold fusion. Fusion. They were going to publish a scientific paper on what they found, but their employer at the University of Utah pressured them into announcing it at this press conference. And the world erupted. It was the good news, very similar to what we're hearing today. Only nobody could replicate their experiment. It didn't work. Here's Tom Brokaw on NBC Nightly News. The claim of two Utah scientists that they produced large amounts of energy in a laboratory jar through atomic fusion. If true, it would be a remarkable breakthrough, cheap, plentiful energy. Tonight, other scientists at MIT and elsewhere are saying they have evidence suggesting there was no fusion. Now, to be clear, the experiment conducted at the University of Utah in the 90s is very different than the experiment announced today. But as we said off the top, there's not a scientist of a certain age in the entire world who isn't reminded of that embarrassing moment in 1991, including no doubt those scientists today at Lawrence Livermore. Back to you.